Good morning. Today we're going to be breaking down the Canucks and Flames from February 17th. Canucks win 5-1. Let's break down all the goals. All right, the Canucks scored early in this one. We're just a minute and a half in. Uh, and basically the Flames are breaking out here. Goudreau plays this up. And I want you just to watch Niels Hoaglander right down here at the bottom of your screen. He's in a bit of a battle, I think, with Sean Monaghan. And he just gets around him, works around him, and then he's able to... Just get his stick in there and make a perfect poke check. Sends the puck this way and it's coming right to Bo Horvat. As the camera slowly shifts over, we suddenly see Horvat's got a step on Anderson and the Canucks are two on one. Horvat and Jordy Ben. Jordy Ben, obviously not an elite goal scorer, but he does have a shot here. And what I love here is this little fake from Horvat. Horvat does a little fake of the shot right here, makes it look like he's just taking a long shot at Markstrom. And what that does is it gets this guy to move just a little bit. Watch watch this defender here on this fake shot. It makes him quickly shift and move his stick out of the way, opening this passing lane for Jordy Ben. Well, we also see Jacob Markstrom fully committing to Bo Horvat's shot here. He's looking right at him, and now this puck's coming this way, so Markstrom now has to cover this ground really fast. And what that does is it opens him up. Ben gets a quick shot off, and at, look at how much of this net's open, right? Like basically this entire side of the net's wide open. As this shot comes through, Markstrom sprawls over to try to get on it, and that just opens up a huge hole in the five hole. And that's exactly where this puck goes, gets through, Jordy Ben makes it one nothing Vancouver. All right, the Canucks' second goal is a beauty. Quinn Hughes breaking out of his own zone, um, coming up this way. I don't really know why Edler's here and Pearson's here. They don't really have any options. I do love that we see Hoaglander on this side of the screen here taking out his man. You love to see that. Uh, Quinn Hughes basically comes up with this one, and he just feeds a beautiful pass here to Besser, or to Horvat. sorry. Obviously, he has he could play it over to Edler or like over to this guy, but this guy's a threat, or just up to Pearson. Those are all boring plays. Quinn Hughes goes for it, and he basically fires it ahead. Horvat bats this out of the air and ends up going right between the D-men. I think this D-man thought Horvat was going to miss, and he was going to go collect the puck that was going to come off of the boards here. But since Horvat got a piece of it, he now has a straight line right to the net. As Bo Horvat comes in, Markstrom... Sort of comes out to challenge, but he does it kind of timidly, and I don't think that he thought that Bo Horvat was going to get to this puck so quick. I think that he thought this puck was going to sort of fall ahead of Horvat. Markstrom could get there first, uh, but now he's too far out, right? He's committed. If he just if he stops here, Horvat's just going to go around him and score. So Markstrom's only option is he's got to take something out. He's got to take the puck out, or he's got to take Horvat out. Uh, unfortunately, he's for him, he's not able to get too much. Horvat's able to pull it to the forehand. Um, Markstrom should kind of have his stick out here to start, just widen his uh, his span if he's going to come out like this. Uh, but all Horvath has to do is basically get the puck to here. He's got a wide open net, and that's exactly what he does. Markstrom does get a trip on him. Horvath's able to get enough of it, go into the wall hard, and celebrate with the boys as he's just made it 2 nothing Vancouver. All right, next play here. Flames are breaking out. Giordano is going to try a stretch pass here. He's got Matthew Kachuk sitting basically on the Canucks' blue line. So he's going to fire this through. And Jordy Ben is able to reach it, interrupt it, but he's on his backhand when this puck comes, and he's not able to get all of it. So it just sort of falls right here, and Mangiapane has momentum. So he'll come in, he'll pick this puck up, take it around Kachuk. Hor or Hughes was on Kachuk, thinking that he was going to get the puck, but now that it's Mangiapane who has more speed, Hughes is kind of caught, and he needs to turn around and catch up quickly. Uh, he makes that pivot, Mangiapane then cuts it wide, and drives to the net. So Mangiapane going wide here, gets it around Quinn Hughes, and what he wants to do is he wants to take it basically around Holtby, and then tuck it just inside this far post over here, and just wrap it, just sort of pull it around, and beat Holtby to this side of the net. And he does a decent job of this. The only problem for him is the puck gets a little too far ahead of him. You can't really see it with the snow, but it's sort of out here. Here's a stick, and it's sort of out here in front of him. So he's reaching, and he's not able to get control of the puck till about there. And we see it here. This is the shot he ends up with. He's got the puck here on his stick. And he really has 
nothing to shoot at, right? Like he's got a little lane to try to basically aim for this far post, but he's reaching out and he's trying to control the puck. So he's basically curling it this way. So the best he's able to do is shoot it through basically on this exact line. And unluckily for Holtby, as he's sliding back, this skate blade will come over and just make contact with it. It just goes off of it, touches the post, goes in, and it's 2-1. And it's looking like Calgary might get some momentum here late in the second period. Now that potential for momentum was short-lived as 15 seconds later Canucks are in the Calgary zone. I love this play from Pedersen here. He picks up the puck from in the corner. It was coming around the boards this way and he's able to pick the puck up with this guy coming and he turns around basically using his body as a shield uh, of the puck. So he's able to pull it here and Valimaki closes in on him. Well, we now have basically three guys looking at Pedersen. This guy's blocking a pass to Miller, but Besser is back behind the net here, and he's 100% open. So Petey makes a smart, easy play, and he's not able to get a lot of it, but he's just able to chip it through to Besser. And what I really like here, which is kind of hard to see on this play, is if you look on the left side, you see JT Miller, and he sort of backs up here. And what he's trying to do is make it so these two defenders right here and here forget about him and it works so Besser gets the puck behind the net he now has this guy coming around and this guy closing in on him and what that does is again he's getting double teamed it opens Pedersen up once again as Valimaki has just come over from covering him so Besser draws both guys in right now we have one here one here both coming in on him that means someone's got to be open and it's Pedersen in the corner again so he feeds it over to Pedersen who again now has a ton of space and what this does, Valimaki goes over. This guy in front also goes over. And look at JT Miller all the way up at the blue line up here. And right as Pedersen gets this puck and this guy leaves and this guy goes here, well, he's able to just fill this open space right here and get a wide open shot off. So Pedersen gets it, waits. Here comes JT Miller right through that gap, like I said. And Pedersen is just able to feed it. And look at this open spot for a shot. Absolutely perfection rips it right into the top corner, makes it 3-1 for the Canucks. But we're not done yet. Moments later, about 30 seconds later, Flames are trying to clear the zone. This puck comes up to the point, and this is a great check by Nate Schmidt, coming in from the blue line, pinching in, and breaking this play up. So he goes in, gets just enough of it. Kachuk is forced to play it into the middle, and basically we have two guys. We have Miller, or we have Besser and Tanev here reaching for this puck. And what happens is both of them miss it, and ends up hitting Tanev's skate, and who has his eyes up and is ready to come in and pick that up? It's JT Miller. And what I want you to notice here, how many Calgary Flames do you see? One, two, three, four, five. All five Flames are above this line. And what that does, Elias Pettersson, all alone down low. Miller sees this, immediately gets on this puck and makes a pass down to him. Really smart play, holds the line. Pedersen has so much room down low. Now he can quarterback this play from down low. What that does is it turns this guy around. It turns this guy around. Tanev's looking this way. Everyone's looking at Pedersen. Nate Schmidt now can walk into the slot. Look at this big area for Nate Schmidt to walk in and get a shot off. That's exactly what happens. PD feeds him. Schmidt's shot is stopped. And Besser coming in for the rebound. Again, you love to see that. Comes in. Puck comes to, I think this is Mangiapane. And he tries to basically pull a Jake for Tannen. And instead of just, what he should be doing is just smack it to the corner. But he tries to carry it over. Besser's just able to get enough of this and get it back on Markstrom. Puck is right here right now. Uh, and it ends up coming out right to JT Miller. And what I love here, look, Petey's right here and he was waiting. But he's got this guy right on him. He's got Hannafin sort of right on him. But Nate Schmidt, who had just had that shot, has sort of curled back into this position here. He sort of did a little loop ends up right here and now he's ready and there's no one on him right this guy's not in his way so Miller has the option he can just quickly tap it over to Pedersen for an open net but this guy might get a stick in there Hannafin might get a stick in there or we can just go to Schmidt there's no sticks getting in his way he just has to basically beat Hannafin which he does into the wide open net and it's 4-1 to end the second period all right the Canucks last goal here about 14 minutes to go here in the third period Flames get the puck behind the net. Holpe's sort of backing up, and Mangiapane is coming in for a chance. This is a wraparound attempt, and Holpe's able to get the pad down, and he uses his stick to sort of push it out, and this puck ends up flying right out here to JT Miller, who's going to pick this up. And he's got this pressure from Nesterov. They both miss it, and Tyler Myers 
is a machine. He's going for that puck. He goes and picks it up. And suddenly, he got he gets a step on Nesterov. This guy's falling behind. It's a four-on-one the other way. Uh, Besser is way ahead, and you can see him tapping his stick here. And so Myers is going to play this up to him. I wish he'd play it up to him right now while Besser has all of his speed. He waits a little bit. So Besser has to cut a little on the line to slow down. Puck comes in just on side, just on side, by the way. And it's a four-on-one. He's got Yule Levy coming down this wing. So that's one of his best options. If he's going to pass it, though, now is probably the time, right? Quickly feed it over, because look at all of this space that Yule Levy has. But instead, he cuts back a little bit and takes it down the wing. And again, here are his options. He's got, he can try to sauce it through to Yule Levy, but this stick is potentially in the way. And the issue with this pass over is Yule Levy's left-handed, right? So he's on his offside. And as that puck comes through, it's hard to shoot a one-timer on your offside, because he's gonna have to get it, receive it, and then shoot. Um, his other options, he could do a quick one-timer to Myers, but this guy's kind of coming in the line. Uh, Miller's right next to him, so he's not really an option either. So what he does is he just loads up and fires a shot. And this is a better look at the shot here. Uh, we see, um, it looks like Besser might be looking five hole almost. What we see is Markstrom gets really low. Like, look at how low his shoulders are. They're well below the crossbar as he's trying to really anticipate uh, maybe a pass across. If this does come across, he's low and he can push off to go this way. But this just opens up this corner of the net for Brock Besser. And what, what a shot. Look at this. Look at this placement. Uh, Markstrom, he tries to get the glove up but it's just perfectly off the bar and in. It's 5-1, this game is over, that's all she wrote. If you enjoyed this analysis, be sure to subscribe, hit like, follow me on Twitter, do all the YouTube stuff, it's all down below. Uh, we make these after every Canucks game, and if the Canucks have a long break, we'll start making them for some other teams as well. Uh, there's a playlist up here if you wanna go watch some of my other film analysis videos. Otherwise, I hope you have a good day, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.